Welcome to the third installment of using pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics to uh, dose uh, anti-cancer agents. We we did a quick overview in the first segment. The second segment was on busulfan, and now we're moving on to methotrexate. Methotrexate is another anti-cancer agent where we commonly use kinetics, um, but this is not really calculating as much as just using nomograms, so it's actually easier, but you have to make your way through the nomograms um, to individualize the dosing. And this may change over time. These nomograms may fall out of favor, and then you might have to do actual kinetics someday, which I'm sure you all can do. All right, so let's learn a little bit about methotrexate from a kinetic standpoint. As you may or may not have learned by now, it's used to treat many things like leukemias, lymphomas, and breast cancer. It's also used for autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and Crohn's disease. So, and usually it's in lower doses for those. You're not going to use like the high dose methotrexate for the autoimmune diseases, at least not at this point. We commonly use uh, lower doses for those, but obviously a lot of the kinetic par parameters still apply. Um, the absorption is rapid from an oral dose that occurs in one to five hours. Um, the absorption is actually um, nonlinear, which is interesting. So you must somehow um, overwhelm the absorption sites that absorb the drug because as you give more drug, the uh, bioavailability decreases. So um, when you give 10 milligrams per meter squared of, of uh, and you can see it's dose based on body surface area. When you give 10 milligrams per meter squared, you will have a bioavailability of 70 to 90 percent. If you go up to 100 milligrams per meter squared, you're going to have a bioavailability closer to 30 percent. So you can see that the um, bioavailability decreases as you increase the dose. This is important. Um, you can see this slide. I guess I don't know how to use this thing yet. I'm going to have to get a lesson from Dr. Dudley. But um, so I'll try to use the mouse rather than this thing because it's just messing me up. Um, as you can see on our x-axis here, we have the dose, which is increasing from, uh, again, I think I said like 10 milligrams per meter squared, tenfold up to 100 milligrams per meter squared. And you can see the bioavailability here goes from zero to 100%. And what we'd like to see is something that stays consistent as the dose increases, but you can see easily here that as you increase the dose, the bioavailability decreases. Um, I was gonna, I guess I later have some pointers about that. Okay, moving on to the volume distribution. Initially, you have a volume distribution of 0.18 liters per kilogram. At steady state, it increases to uh, 0.4 to 0.8 liters per kilogram. This is a pretty small volume distribution. This is closer to total body water, still on the small side, but it certainly increases, doesn't it? This tells you that there's probably two compartments at least, right? Um, this would be your initial compartment and then your eventual steady state volume distribution. So the drug is moving um, to occupy more space as you give it time to get there. The fraction unbound of this drug is about 50% for albumin, which is not very high. So you really don't have to worry about it, even though salicylates will displace it. Salicylates have a higher affinity for those albumin sites. And you often are giving uh, methotrexate and salicylates together, especially for rheumatoid arthritis and some other autoimmune diseases where there's pain involved, you could be giving salicylates. Um, this is a really important point. Effusions, which is common with cancer, right, may pr provide a reservoir for the drug. So you can see effusions that would provide a reservoir. What's that going to do? The drug is going to hang out in these effusions and not be cleared normally. Therefore, your half-life will be longer um, and the drug will hang around longer than what you would expect it to um, if it were a uh, without the effusion. And this is most important when you get into very high doses like 250 milligrams per meter squared. You're going to see the drug hanging out and concentrating in these effusions and not being eliminated as quickly as 
drugs, drug that's in other uh, parts of the body. About 10% of the plasma concentration will, uh, the CSF, if you measure the CSF, what's in the cerebral spinal fluid, if you're treating a, um, a cancer that could be present in your CNS and you want to penetrate the CSF, the concentrations will be about a tenth in the cerebral spinous fluid when compared to what's in the plasma. All right, what this shows you is, okay, here's your concentration, and here's a log, con or I'm sorry, here's your time, and here's your log concentration. So this is a natural log per time uh, concentration curve. So since it's log, if it were one compartment, we'd expect this to be straight. As you can see, it bends a little, and this one really bends. So this one is one that has an effusion. So these effusions cause the, uh, there to be a second and maybe even third compartment here. There's a little bend here which shows you there's probably a second compartment, but this one's very, is much more extreme. So even though they have very similar concentrations all along here, once you get to 48 and 60 hours, you can see that they take it, we start to not eliminate this one as quickly as this. And you'll see this is important because with high dose uh, methotrexate toxicity, this is the area that matters. And these are the people that are gonna be in trouble as far as having toxicity due to the methotrexate. Okay, how is this drug cleared? Um, it's cleared renally, primarily. It's filtered, secreted, and reabsorbed. Um, there is some biliary excretion, which we haven't talked about yet. We will talk about that in GI, since we usually put the biliary tract in with GI. Um, about 10% of an IV dose will end up in the gut. So what does that tell you? It means that it's being pumped into the gut from the biliary system. And also, um, there is some evidence of some enterohepatic recycling. So the drug is is pumped by the uh, biliary system into the gut and then it can get absorbed back into the, uh, through the GI tract and back into the liver and into the systemic system uh, with their enterohepatic recycling. The half-life of methotrexate is about eight to 15 hours. We've already mentioned that there's two compartments. We just saw that in the last slide, right? That there's two compartments. Half-life should be based upon the second compartment usually. So. Um, <clears throat> so let's let's round it to 10 because that's going to make it easier to uh, to multiply. Um, so 10 times 5 is about 50 hours, so a little over two days. If we use 12 hours, that's uh, two and a half days. So we're somewhere between two and two and a half days to get to steady state, unless we have renal impairment. Okay, high dose methotrexate. You keep hearing me mention this because that's really the ones that cause the trouble, as you might imagine. High-dose methotrexate may cause precipitation in the kidneys, which will cause kidney failure, which is not good. How do we avoid this? We alkalinize the urine. Alkalinize the urine, um, and that will help keep the methotrexate in solution. So you need to have a pH of greater than 6.5 in the urine. You also want to hydrate the heck out of these people. Fluids, 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 so you keep things moving. Um, Now, what about um, correlating concentrations with efficacy? So concentrations of methotrexate with efficacy. Concentration of methotrexate is necessary for inhibition of the DNA synthesis in tissue specific, is tissue specific. So depending on what tissue you're trying to treat, uh, you're gonna have different concentrations necessary of the methotrexate. We know that it's exposure dependent. It's not just concentration at a point in time, but time and concentration, which really means area to the curve. But we don't have the area to the curve data like what we do for busulfan. We are looking at usually um, C mins to be, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so uh, along with this, this tissue specific, if you're trying to inhibit uh, the DNA synthesis in the bone marrow, you need to have a concentration of 0.02 micromoles per liter to produce a partial inhibition. If you're less than 0.01 micromoles per liter, you're unlikely to produce any effect. 
So you need to be at least at 0 0.02 to partially inhibit the DNA synthesis in the bone marrow. High dose methotrexate for osteo, it was just used for osteosarcoma. It's also used for ALL, which we'll talk about in a minute. But for osteosarcoma, you give 12 grams per meter squared over four hours. And you wanna have a Cmax of at least 1,000 micromoles per liter. And this is the best indicator of success. So this, of course, relates to efficacy. High dose methotrexate for ALL is only one gram per meter squared. And if the concentration is greater than or equal to 16 micromoles per liter, you have a better chance of remission of ALL. So you don't near, nearly need as high a dose for ALL as you do for osteosarcomas. All right, again, here is a remission, not a survival, but a continuous complete remission percentage. Again, we'd like to stay at 100% as we move out to eight years post-diagnosis or post-treatment probably. So if we individualize their therapy uh, of methotrexate, we have a much better outcome than conventional therapy, which is just using um, protocol-driven dosing. So I don't know about you, but if this were me or someone I loved, I'd want to have the individualized therapy.